الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله Have we tasted it? I want us all to really think about this and contemplate over the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it comes in a hadith an Anas and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال on the authority of Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said thalathun man kunna fihi wajada halawat al-iman that there are three characteristics three characteristics that whoever has them inside of him or her then they will have taste the sweetness of iman so have we tasted the sweetness of iman what are these characteristics the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said an yakuna allah wa rasuluhu ahabba ilayhi mimma siwahuma that allah and his messenger <coughs> are more beloved to him than anything else. That Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are more beloved to him than anything else. Shaytan, he has ways to attack us. They're not all overt. They're not all blatant. They're not all obvious. There are certain subtle ways that he attacks us. And his attacks, they don't just come in one burst, but they develop slowly over time. There is a lot of wisdom why we don't imitate the kuffar. Because inside of their ways, inside of their mores and their mannerisms and so on and so forth, and their mentality, there are un-Islamic aspects. There are things that will destroy you. and will become hindrances between you and between your own success from them is the concept of love that the disbelievers have and they repeat it over and over again in their love novels their romance novels in their rom-coms in their romance movies so on and so forth over and over and over again you keep hearing it all the time people will say things like i love you with all my heart They'll go beyond that and say, I love you with all my heart and soul. Yeah, subhanAllah. To a created being. If that is truly in fact the case, and you have certain women who they expect this, they want this, they require this, they look for it. And certain men feel obligated to give it, to provide it, to at least tell them that. But I want you to reflect. Look at these words. If these words are true, that you love this person with all your heart, If these words are true, how can you ever taste the sweetness of Iman? When Allah and His Messenger are supposed to be more beloved to you than everything else, including your wife, including your husband, including your children, including your parents. Do you understand the attack when people are ready to believe that this is what it is? It will cut them off from ultimate success. So have we tasted the sweetness of Iman? Is Allah and His Messenger more beloved to us than other than them? The second characteristic, أَن يُحِبَّ الْمَرْ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ is that they love an individual and they only love them for the sake of Allah. Meaning that their love for them is based on the sake of Allah. Meaning that the more obedient that person is to Allah, the more love you have for that person. And when that person is disobedient to Allah, then your hatred for them will be in proportion to their disobedience. Is this how we love each other? Do we love each other upon this way? 
Do the love that we have for Allah overcomes our natural love because we have a natural love. A natural love. You naturally love your parents. You naturally love your spouse. You naturally love your children. Yes. But at the same time, the love that is legislated is that we love for Allah. So when those aforementioned do something that is sinful, do we hate that fact and hate them a little bit because of that? Or is our love unconditional? Another trap for shaitan. The love is unconditional. I love you unconditionally. I am your son. I am your husband. I am your nephew. You're supposed to love me no matter what. Oh yes, yeah, says who? We love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a time that the love we have for Allah will override our natural love. No matter how much I may love you naturally, because you are disobedient unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I hate you because of this. No matter how much I may love you natural love, you cannot use that as a justification for me to assist you in doing haram. Because I don't love you that much. Why? Because I love Allah and His Messenger more. Have we tasted the sweetness of Iman? Hada aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li jami'i al-muslimin fastaghfiru fa innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd Ya ibadullah we have to be on our P's and Q's because the shaytan, he attacks us. And you know the greatest attack, the greatest attack is to attack an individual and they don't know they're under attack. That's the greatest attack, the most efficient. The enemy that presents themselves as a friend, that is the most dangerous enemy. Because the one that shows you open hostility, you keep your guard up. You keep them back. You won't let them get close. But the one that pretends to be a friend, you let them in. You let them close. You share with them certain private matters and so on and so forth. You share with them enough so they know exactly how to destroy you. That's the most dangerous one. So the most dangerous attack is that attack and we don't know we're under attack. So when you sit down and you watch that rom-com, when you sit down and you read that romance novel and so on and so forth, you're being attacked. It comes across like it's entertainment. It comes across like it's to provide you a good feeling and so on and so forth. But it is instilling in you these concepts. It is instilling in you these concepts that if they take root, they will destroy you. The third characteristic that a person has to have to taste the sweetness of Iman. And yakraha in ya'udah fil kufr. كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ Is that they hate, they despise, they detest to go back to disbelief. Now I want you to think about this. To go back to disbelief. You see, sometimes the shaitan will come and he'll tell you, look, your family, that you know, you're born and raised Muslim. Your mother Muslim. Your father Muslim. Your grandfather, grandmother Muslim. And, 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 and. Right? So a person say, what you mean? I never came from Kufr. Listen, at some point, at some period, somebody in your family accepted Islam. Whether that was 10 years ago, whether that was 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, at some point, somebody accepted Islam. And before that, depending on where you were from, they were upon something else. Whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Buddhism, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Judaism, whether it be, whether it be, whether it be. They were upon something else. And the remnants of those cultures, they still remain. The practitioners of those religions, they still here. So if we think that we can't be affected, then we are just fooling ourselves. In any event, the point is, is that you should hate to revert back to ways that your forefathers left. For those who have accepted Islam, you should hate to go back to that jahiliya that you left. Because what's the sense of becoming Muslim if you're going to act like a, like a Catholic? What sense does that make? What sense does that make? So, 
do we have this characteristic that we hate to return back to kufr just like we will hate to be thrown into a fire? If someone presented a, a big bonfire right here, say, look, brothers, step up, step up. Who want to jump in? Everybody will say, no, not me. If we pick one person and say, no, you go on, you're going to jump in. And we grab them. What is he going to do? Is he going to go willingly? No, he's going to fight us with all his might. He's going to fight. Do we fight with all our might? Because when we truly hate to return back to Kufr, when Thanksgiving comes around, we're not trying to get a turkey. We don't worry about a turkey. We hate to go back to that. We don't want that. When Christmas comes around, we're not trying to look at Christmas lights and sing Christmas songs and give people presents and accept presents. No, we don't want none of that. For those of us who left that, we left that. I don't want that. I left it. I don't want it. When people offer you, come to the club, come to the party, come to the Christmas party, everybody bringing a dish, you bring a dish. We don't want no parts of that. I don't want none of that. I left that. Doing that, that's like you throwing me, trying to throw me into a fire. I don't want that. Do we fight with the same intensity to get away from those things? When they call us to the un-Islamic lifestyle, do we fight with the same intensity? The women in Jahiliyyah, they didn't cover do they fight with the same intensity to cover now? Now we're Muslim. We've been guided. We're not going to dress like you people. The men in Jahiliyyah, they dressed in an immodest way. Now, are we going to imitate and go back to the immodest way? We're going to adopt their skinny jeans and we're going to adopt their clothes that don't cover anything. So now we are clothed but naked. Does this even make sense? When the women do it, it doesn't make sense because we say, I don't want people looking at my wife and looking at what she has. So the women, they don't have that jealousy. People looking at your husband, they see his muscles, they see this, they see that, and then they wear skinny jeans. Oh, be that don't make you feel jealous? No, you can't go outside like that. What is this? Put on an Azar, put on a thal. What are you doing? Do we hate to go back to kufr like we will hate to be thrown into a fire? Do we hate these kafir ways like we hate to be thrown into a fire? Have we tasted the sweetness of Iman? Because when you got what you got, you don't care about nothing else. You know they say like when you have a good woman at home, you don't care about the stuff in the street because your woman is good. You understand that, 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 that parable? That saying that when you have what you need, you're not looking for nothing else. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said another hadith. That first hadith was Mutafaquna Ali, collected by Bukhari and Muslim. And another hadith was collected by Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, ذَاقَ طَعْمَ iman. He has tasted the sweetness of, of Iman. Who? Maradiya billah. Maradiya billah. Rabban. Wabi Islam. Deenan. Wabi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasoolan. That he has tasted the sweetness of faith. The one who is pleased that Allah is his Lord. That Islam is his deen. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. So we're straight. Their ways, we don't need that. Allah is my Lord. Islam is my religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is my prophet. Their, 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 their ways and manners and live their life, we don't need that. Allah is my Lord. I'm pleased with that. I'm not looking for nothing else. Their lifestyle, I mean, we don't want that lifestyle. We, we're Muslim. Islam is my lifestyle. Islam is my deen. I'm good. I don't need nothing else. These, these, these figures that you have and you want to follow them, nah, that's fine for you, but not for me because I'm pleased with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as my messenger. So I don't put no human being words before his. I don't put no human being statement before his. I follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because I love him more than I love you. And of course that, because I love him more than I love me. Have we tasted the sweetness of faith? نسأل الله تعالى أن يوفقني وإياكم لما يحبه ويرضى وأن يجعلنا من الذين يستمعون قولا فيتبعون أحسنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقنا عذاب النار هذا يا عباد فأقيموا الصلاة